And so we hope that you um, not only were able to catch a glimpse into our culture, but appreciate what we have. And as, as what Johnny Hill said in the very beginning, this is the part of who we are that we carry on from us, and we've been doing so since the beginning of time. And with that, you know, just please remember that the land that surrounds you, um, the significance of this area, and the words of our people um, to always respect and treat the sacred landscape with the utmost respect. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy, Richard, bird singers. That was great. Um, I think it's important that we connect. And if you go into the site, um, uh, Richard was right. There's a lot of aspects of the new movie culture intertwined into the design because they work with us um, day in and day out. Stuff going back and forth. And we incorporated those aspects of design and uh, culture into the project. And so it's a discovery. So come and discover. Our second dedication will begin with an overview of the Cold War because we're going to talk about the Cold War Memorial and it's time to set the stage. And that stage will be set by Dr. Raymond um, Uzaitis, who is president of the Nuclear Security Technologies. Good morning, and I'm very proud to be here this morning. My name is Ray Uzaitis, and I'm president of the National Security Technologies Company that is the managing and operating contractor for the Nevada National Security Site. NS Tech is proud, really proud, to have made the contribution that put the construction fund over the top so silent heroes of the Cold War Memorial could be completed as planned and envisioned by Mr. Stephen Ryrie. As we prepare to dedicate the new memorial today on Mount Charleston, it's a perfect opportunity to recognize the service and sacrifices not only of the personnel who perished in the plane crash, but the thousands of other patriots, in a way, brothers and sisters in arms, who helped our, our nation win the Cold War. My dedication of the National Cold War Memorial will be Mr. Stephen Ryrie, Chairman of the Silent Heroes of the Cold War Committee. It was 16 years ago when Stephen stepped into a personal journey to discover the mystery of a plane crash on the top of Mount Charleston. That journey led to the realization not only for the need to put to rest the memory of those on board of that fateful airplane, but further to recognize all those who served under the veil of secrecy. The Forest Service is proud to have the silent heroes of the Cold War as partners on this site. Please welcome Stephen Ryrie. Thank you very much. I sure wish I was sitting down there with you just listening to someone up here. But um, the journey that I've taken today is the end of a 16 year journey which I feel incredibly honored to play a role. I'd like to recognize all those who helped me along the way um, and all the delegates that are here. Um, I'd also like to mention to the new newbie that we understand that this mountain was sacred to you long before it was sacred to us. And we join with you in our consideration and our love for this mountain and its sacred nature. I'd we'll also like to thank the Forest Service for the partnership that they've been. They really thought outside the box. And to see the facility and to be a part of it and watch it and come up here almost every Saturday, it seems, for uh, a couple of years, it seems, and watch it little by little turn into what it is today has been a remarkable thing. And I've seen amazing people kick in and, and, and do a part and play a part, and their imprint is felt and seen here. And I'd like to thank the U.S. Air Force 9068 families. When I was on the mountain in 1998, I couldn't have imagined that today would happen. Couldn't have imagined that there'd be so many families coming all over the country to be with us today from that simple debris that I sat amongst many years ago. 
So I, I welcome them, and I'm honored to have them here. Today is May 28th, 9th. Today we dedicate the U.S. Air Force 9068 Memorial and Silent Heroes of the Cold War National Memorial. This is not only the first national memorial of its kind, as it honors Cold War heroes who worked in secret, but it's also the first national memorial built on Forest Service land, and is also the first national memorial in the state of Nevada. In honoring all of the American heroes that paid the ultimate, satisfy, or ultimate sacrifice, let us reflect for just a moment on a scene that's played out countless times and will be played out countless more. I'm referring to that moment when the United States flag that is draped over the coffin of a fallen hero is gently lifted off and carefully folded 12 times and then tucked. And then the beautiful red, white, and blue flag is presented to the arms of the next of kin with these words. This flag is presented on behalf of a grateful nation. May we never forget that we are that grateful nation. But gratitude, however, is not guaranteed. Gratitude for the sacrifice of fallen heroes must be taught and learned, passed on and passed down. Today, we dedicate the U.S. Air Force 9068 Memorial and the Silent Heroes of the Cold War Memorial. It is our hope and our prayer that these memorials will promote patriotism for this generation and for the generations of Americans that will follow. We also hope there'll be a place of education where the young people can come and can learn about our time here long after we're gone and understand the challenges that we face and the lessons that we needed to learn. We also hope that this is a gathering place for veterans, but mostly we hope and pray that these two memorials will be evidence of the honor and the respect given to those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice on all our behalf, on the behalf of us, a grateful nation. Silent Heroes of the Cold War National Memorial is the first memorial of its kind. It is not a memorial for forgotten heroes, nor is it a memorial for heroes found on the registry of those lost in war. No, this is a memorial for those fallen heroes for whom their sacrifice was purposefully erased to satisfy the security of our nation. The men lost on November 17, 1955 were part of a secret army that worked and fought to keep the nuclear threat at bay. The 14 men lost to us on November 17, 1955 were as follows. James F. Bray. James Billy Brown, Clayton D. Ferris, Guy R. Fasolis, John H. Gaines, Fred F. Hanks, Richard J. Ruda, Rodney H. Crimendall, William H. Marr, Terrence J. O'Donnell, Captain George M. Pappas Jr., Harold C. Silent, William J. Urlatus, and Paul Jean Wynnum. We will never know the extent of our sacred debt to the silent heroes of the Cold War. Thanks to their secret work, the nuclear missiles never left their silos. And most, if not all of us here today, are here because of it. At this time, I would like to introduce someone that's very special to me when I made a call out over a decade ago to get help from those that were representing us, uh, really one person answered the call. I got several personal phone calls from this individual, and uh, I'll never forget the one call where he said, okay, see, where are we at and what do we need to do? That person is sitting here with us today, and I've asked for the opportunity to introduce them. That person is Senator Harry Reid. On July 27, 2001, Senator Reid introduced Senate Bill 1257 to inventory and then preserve Cold War artifacts and sites and to pave the way for the memorial which we are dedicating today. 
On March 30th, 2009, President Barack Obama signed into uh, law the Cold War Bill, which became Public Law 111-11. Also, it is well known that Senator Reid is an avid supporter of veterans. And it is my, inter uh, my distinct privilege and opportunity to introduce U.S. Senator Majority, Minority Leader Harry Reid. <laughs> federal government at its best. Everything that's happened here is a result of the federal government in one way or the other. It's Cold War Memorial, Steve has talked about, um, because of the flaw we passed. It was hard to get passed. We tried a number of occasions, it was killed in different ways by those who weren't interested in this. And finally, we had a land bill. Uh, one of the first things we did in the Obama presidency. It's a great big bill, and I stuck it in there. And uh, it's now the law. We have, uh, the reason we have this visitor center here is because of another federal law, Southern Nevada Land Act, called SNPLA. To the fray as they march to the fray, defended by our might, ever standing for the right, it weighs for it. the dedication of the Seven Stones Plaza, the National Cold War Memorial, the Flight 9068 Memorial, and the Springs Mountains Visitor Gateway. It's really been my pleasure and honor to serve you here today and to have taken part in the team that made these dreams possible. Please note that there are many, many team members who made this a reality, whose names are not written on a plaque. To them and to everyone, I give my sincere thanks.
remember what this represents? The weight? It's pretty heavy. Yeah, this is too. Mine ran seamless. On the inside, the far away. 